All right. All right. Welcome to the uh, Township Committee. Welcome to the uh, Delanca Township Committee meeting, August 17th, 2020. This is via in-person at the municipal building and remote access options at 7 p.m. We're starting a bit late due to some technical difficulties for the last 25 minutes. Uh, we're presently in the municipal building, 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Brown is present. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olet. And Mr. Templeton. Here. Also present uh, via phone is Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk, is in the room. Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk, is uh, on by phone. Uh, we have uh, this is uh, Provenzano, who is assisting on technical matters. Uh, Mr. Chief, De Chief Jesse DeSando, Chief of Police. Uh, anyone that I missed here? Uh, flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the Gen Sunshine Statement, uh, please be advised the proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Career Post and published in the December 27, 2019 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Remote access meeting option notice. Please take notice that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 6 x sequitur, and in consideration of executive orders number 103, 104, and 107 issued by Governor Murphy, declaring a state of emergency and a public health emergency in the state of New Jersey, the Township of Delanco does hereby notify the public that to protect health, safety, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of government, the meeting of the Delanco Township Committee is scheduled for August 17, 2020 at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey at 7 p.m. will also be available via electronic format for members of the public who wish to participate in the meeting remotely. The public may participate in the meeting or via remote access as follows. Uh, Delanco Township Committee meeting at 7 p.m. It's a Zoom format. The web address uh, meeting ID is 968-8340-5341. And the passcode for entry is 699464. And also for a... Uh, you want all those numbers read into the record? Mrs. Lohr? All right. All right. And there are various other phone numbers to call in. They're all on the public notice and available on the municipal website. Uh, public comment statement. Purpose of the public comment sessions is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Delanco Township Committee. The committee may be hearing the information for the first time. It is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, I do ask that the, for a call in a public comment that you please identify your name and your address. Uh, and if you're in physically in the room that uh, we do have a, a table and microphone set up for that purpose. The meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions, session one. Hello? Hello? Hello, speak your name? Hello? Hi, this is 
Catherine Tersich Keeley at 740 Rancocas Avenue. Know she's speaking. Uh, Kat. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Catherine Tersich Keeley at 740 Rancocas Avenue. Go ahead. Um, I was just saw a post recently online about a trail that'll be going through Delran um, underneath the train bridge and over to Pennington Park. Um, I was wondering if you know when the actual route will be released and if you have any information about what it will look like going down Rancocas Avenue, which is where I live. The, uh, the county has the county parks website, I believe has that information. Uh, there's also uh, some documentation that the township has uh, that uh, Rank Focus Trail has been in the works for several years. And uh, uh, part of the route will traverse uh, on the roadways uh, through marked pathways uh, on the road. And then it'll, uh, the trail will be created that joins with the uh, trail network over at the Pennington Park. But the uh, the actual routing, uh, I believe, can be found on the county website, on the parks uh, website, and uh, it will be available. It is a hard copy at the municipal building. If thank you, thanks for your call in. Any other comments, please? Any other comments from the public? Hearing none, I close this session one, uh, close to the public. Comments and reports. Uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here and uh, under the circumstances, I don't think there's anything special further to report that won't show up at the rest of the meeting. So I have nothing further to report. All right, thank you. Uh, department heads. Uh, Chief DeSanto. I'm not. Can you hear me now? Okay. I'll make it brief. The only thing I want to report the significance is uh, recently we've received some information regarding activity, boating activity around Hawk Island. So we've met with the New Jersey Marine Police, uh, New Jersey State Police Marine Unit. And we're talking about doing some uh, collaborative action to try to uh, get some enforcement, both in the water and on the land where appropriate. So that's in the works. And uh, I'll keep the committee up to date. Um, we're looking for the last uh, weekend in um, August to do a, a joint uh, adventure. So we'll post uh, information on our Facebook page when we're going to be out there. And, um, and we're just gathering what specific spots we can enforce because it's a myriad of different jurisdictions or jurisdi myriad of different owners in that area. So we're just trying to pin down a specific area. So I just want to give you that in case anyone inquires that there's been um, consultation with the Marine unit and uh, we're working on it. That's all. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Mrs. Lord. Yes, I have a, a couple of things to report. The first thing is um, the League of Municipalities Conference uh, held in November of each year. They were making arrangements um, for an in-person conference. Um, they have changed that. There will uh, be no in-person conference on Atlantic City. They will be holding their uh, 2020 conference via um, a uh, virtual platform. More information to come. The second thing is that we had um, bid openings for solid waste collection. 
Our current contract expires November 30th of this year. We went out to bid for both uh, manual rear throw as well as an option for um, automated. Uh, we received one bid for the manual throw, which is our current uh, one bid from South Jersey Sanitation, who is our current hauler. And for the automated bid option, we received no bid. So we, in effect, received one bid, South Jersey Sanitation. Um, and there is a slight increase. Well, actually, it's um, for the first year of the contract, uh, it goes up about a dollar a unit per month. And it does translate into about $20,000 more a year for solid waste collection. Um, and again, we had no bids for the automated. Um, one company did participate in the pre-bid conference, had several questions, clarifications. We went over all that with that bidder, but they did not submit a bid. Um, because of the additional bidding requirements for a solid waste contract and the time frame that you have to give the uh, bidders, if we were to go out to bid, if the three towns were to go out to bid at this point uh, to see if we could get better prices or, or whatever, um, we wouldn't meet the November 30th deadline at this point. Uh, the, our consultant, which is Trash Pro, um, who uh, is recommending that we accept the, this uh, bid of South Jersey Sanitation. So, um, it's Township Committee's decision. Again, we are in a, a consortium with Edgewater Park and Beverly. Um, they are meeting with their governing bodies. Uh, I will poll um, the administrator, Tom Pullian and uh, Rich Wilbert um, of Beverly and Tom of Edgewater Park to see uh, if their committees um, are, would like to go out to rebid. The only thing, if we go out to rebid, we'll have to negotiate with South Jersey, the successful bidder extend the contract, which is going to give us these prices anyway. That's who it is. Um, but it is the Township Committee's decision. If you'd like to move forward I, uh, with uh, the resolution at your September 14th meeting, we'll prepare the resolution to uh, award the bid. And basically, if, if that's the case, come December 1st with the new contract, we'll see absolutely no change in service. You won't even know that there's a new contract in place, except you'll have to budget more money in your 2021 budget, which we ex we had expected. We had we had expected um, an, an, an increase. Um, so that's for your for your uh, deliberation, uh, discussion, and, and decision. Whether you'd like to uh, have me prepare the resolution for next month to award the South Jersey Sanitation. Right now we're at five dollars a unit. And your one, uh, the new contract is six dollars a unit, and um, with small increases, the next this year two of the contract it goes up uh, six twelve, so it's a twelve cents per unit increase. And typically, these contracts in in the in the years, it's a three year contract with two uh, one year options for extension. You do see uh, modest increases for each year, and just you know as uh, fuel prices are anticipated to, to climb in this case. You know, they, they did go down, but um, you never know. And also, too, another reason is that um, at the county landfill, the um, used to, when the trucks would go in, they used to put their trash on a transfer station, and that would haul it up to the up to the, uh, the dump. Sort of. Now the trucks, there's no, you, you cannot dump your trash, and then the county will haul it up. You take the truck up and back and forth. Um, so it is more wear and tear on the trucks, more fuel. Um, but it is uh, council committee's decision, and we have no, re we don't know why um, the the two big um, automated companies um, did not bid. We don't, we don't know why, and we're not going to speculate. <laughs> This is uh, John Brown. Janice, thank you for your work. Oh, you got to unmute, John. Star six. Okay. 
I do. I'm unmuted. I hear you. Janet, thank you very much for that work. I'm very disappointed. Uh, there is no uh, automated, because some residents have been hoping for that. Um, that's a little bit peculiar, and that only one bid came in. So, but I know with the Trash Pro company, and I just want to recognize you for uh, successfully. How long is the contract? This contract? Let me. You cut yourself out. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. This contract is a three-year contract with two one-year extension options. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Kate Fitzpatrick. Um, I'd like to reiterate that. Uh, thank you, Janice. And I had read the email that came through um, from, I think, Edward Park may have sent it, or maybe you did. I'm not sure. But um, I think we should move forward with it and put it on for the next meeting, the resolution. I think they're offering. Chris, good. You weren't coming through for it at all. Good, Chris. Hang on, everyone, one minute. I'm back then. Christine Holland. Um, You're good. Just want to say I have no objections to taking the bits of this. We hear you, Chris, but you're very faint. It's hard to keep it right by right by your mouth. This is Christine Holland, and I have no. Uh, no problems with the, uh, the bid to the next meeting. Yeah, just the slightest total lag will completely wash wash you out. And then meet again, star nine. Star nine. All right. All right. Seems we have everyone in agreement. I uh, I. 
agree to move forward with this, and we'll place it on the uh, September 14th agenda. Uh, anything else, Mrs. Lord? Uh, not at this time. I'll have, I have um, several pieces of correspondence. All right. Uh, is Mr. Fenimore on the, by phone? I don't believe so. All right. Uh, Township Committee comments. Uh, Mr. Brown. Yes. Around here, I have uh, two comments. Number one, uh, on Peachtree Lane, there are some cables hanging down. I think they are Comcast or Verizon. Jesse, who do we contact in that event? Peachtree and third, the guy has a uh, rope tied to this uh, street sign to hold it up. And I noticed there's one at my corner at Burlington Avenue and Peachtree hanging down pretty low now where kids could possibly grab it. I don't think it's electric. It's either cable or phone. Can you look into that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Third Street and Peach Street. And Burlington Avenue and Peach Street. Born Burlington Avenue. Okay. Okay, great. And I also just wanted to make a comment, a little project I've been working on that has to do with that. It has to do with our plastic recycling. I have uh, been trying to figure out a way to incorporate recycled plastics into our road paving project. And somebody beat me to the punch. It's being done in California. San Diego, they finally did a road and it saves a lot of money and it uh, has a place for um, a purpose for recycled plastic. So stay tuned. I was kind of hoping that in Atlantic City that maybe one of the vendors was starting to uh, use that product here on the East Coast, but I'll keep, uh, keep you posted on how that's going. That would be wonderful if we could reinvent road paving projects. And that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Brown. Uh, this is Patrick. No. <laughs> Not through the phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the seniors have canceled their meetings for the balance of the year. Uh, Rec has had two concerts to date. I missed the second one. It was a bit rainy that night, but I understand uh, they still had a nice crowd. Uh, everything seems to be in order. People are um, following our rules. Um, we're also very happy that we received the grant from the county for $130,000 for the creation of a multi-use field event lawn, as we called it in the grant application. So we're very happy about that. Uh, the library agreement is tentatively scheduled for August the 26th, provided we receive the updated costs requested prior to that date. Um, I met, uh, Phil and I met with uh, a young man, DJ Fenimore, regarding an Eagle Scout project. And um, we went over a couple of different ideas with him. And since then, um, the Environmental Advisory Board um, has reached out to him and he will be working with them on a plan to submit to REC for uh, approval for the new property at Gateway Park with some planting. We also suggested maybe some benches and a table, but we'll see what they come up with. Once REC has approved it, will it will then be submitted with their endorsement to the Township Committee. The Historic uh, Preservation Advisory Board um, reports are being completed on our monthly due dates, and um, I have submitted a request to Janice to start meeting at the municipal building on the first Wednesday of the month beginning in October. 
Uh, we would like to keep the membership at this time to seven with two alternates and two liaisons at this time. There were two people who submitted letters and um, Ron Naylor was a resident of Delanco and a member at one time. And uh, now he's uh, a resident of Delanco again. I'm pleased to tell you that he's living at the mansion. And uh, so the, it's the board's position that Ron be appointed as the second alternate and that Stephen McLaughlin be moved to the first alternate. Um, Alyssa De La Pena has been invited to attend the meetings and has also um, been put on the list for an associate membership at this time. So I don't know if that on the agenda at all for a motion, Janice, or can we do that now? Uh, actually, I was going to enter the two letters of um, interest during correspondence, but that's fine. Um, you certainly, the committee can certainly move on that appointment to move us, Mr. McLaughlin to alternate number one and Mr. Naylor appointed to the unexpired term for alternate number two. And then, um, you know, so that, that is something you absolutely can, uh, the Township Committee can move on tonight if you wish. So then at this time, I would make that motion that um, Steve McLaughlin be moved to alternate number one and Ron Naylor be appointed as alternate number two. Well, why don't we handle the correspondence, their letter of interest first and receive that and then make the, make the motion to appoint them to those positions. Okay, Janice just said we could do it now, so I thought it would be just as easy. Uh, anyway, um, before I end my uh, report, I would like to say that we have a new employee for the police department, Debbie Ritson, who was a longtime member of the Lanco Township and um, was the president of QP, who was the uh, Citizens United to protect Hawk Island. So it's very nice to have Deb back in town working with um, the township. She's really excited. So that's in my report. Thank you. Where would you like to read those, uh, those two letters at this time? Um, Historic preservation? We'll just jump the sequence just on those three items of correspondence. Okay. So, am I coming through now? Okay, the two letters of interest were received for appointment to the Historical Preservation uh, Advisory Board, one from uh, Ron Naylor and the other one from Alyssa De La Pena. Pena. And um, you can act on that at any time that you please. You want to finish that motion, uh, Kate? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to move that uh, Steve McLaughlin be moved to the first alternate position and that Ron Naylor be appointed as the second alternate for the Historic Preservation Advisory Board. Uh, you want to roll call or? Did you do star six? Colonel Lett, I'll second. You didn't come to try it again. Colonel Lett. Colonel Lett. Just 
Brian Hallett, I'll second the motion. the phone now. Go for it. Mr. Brown, yes. you for those uh, new members of the uh, or the reappointed members of the uh, Historic Preservation Advisory Board. Appreciate your good work. Uh, Mr. Let comments? No report. Thank you. Ms. Holland? Um, so on Friday, I attended the community leader call with Carol Murphy, um, just a big push to remind residents about the importance of answering the census. So taking this opportunity to encourage the delinquents to, uh, to respond to their census. And if you do see somebody knocking on doors, um, they're tasked with trying to round up those stray people that didn't, um, didn't respond, uh, they're, going to be clearly identified as census workers on behalf of the Department of Commerce. Um, they should be working six or seven days a week um, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, it's very critical for towns to uh, to be recognized and um, that money goes or sorry, it uh, helps to allocate money for uh, federal school programs, road programs, grants, housing assistance, and so much else. Um, other than that, I did miss the library work session uh, last week, but I did want to report that the library did apply for a grant for laptops and tablets to assist with distance computer use, which seems to be going nowhere. So um, the county library system would be responsible for maintaining and troubleshooting the equipment. So it's a great find if they do get the grant. Um, as Kate said, we are tentatively scheduled for the August 26th meeting for our subcommittee. Uh, provided they get the documents over to us to review, that'll move forward. And the economic advisory board meeting was canceled. So that's all I have to, to report. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, 
this is Patrick Aubrey went over some of the environmental advisory board uh, activities with uh, the joint project between uh, the EAB and the uh, prospective Eagle Scout on Gateway Park. Uh, the EAB also received a, a $1,300 grant, $1, grant award from the uh, Association of New Jersey Environmental Commissions uh, uh, for a pollinator garden project that will be uh, in several of uh, Delanco's uh, parks and, and green spaces, and that'll be an ongoing project for the next year. Uh, Jeff report from uh, Ms. Provenzano, uh, uh, there was a loss control report, which is a, a quarterly uh, or sometimes a semi-annual safety inspection by the GIF uh, safety officer. No significant de deficiencies were noted, and uh, uh, it uh, acknowledges that uh, all the departments are showing uh, evidence of a strong safety management uh, uh, initiative. So appreciate that. And that's a commendation to the various department heads, public works, police, and administration. Uh, that takes a lot of work. Uh, the MEL uh, public officials training, there are two uh, uh, upcoming dates for uh, a webinar that will be hosted, and that's on. I think there's one coming up soon. I've lost the date, but I'll get that to you. Two dates, and there'll be uh, some other dates coming up in the fall um, that's required training for uh, public officials. And that, uh, that concludes my report for now. I'll have some comments uh, towards the end on the uh, COVID-19 update. Uh, that's all I have under the consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Does any committee member have any questions or wish to have anything from the consent agenda removed for separate consideration? Mayor, ordinance 2020-12. I'd like to have that uh, pulled from the consent agenda for further discussion, please. Dash 12 is correct. All right. Any other? Correct. Yes, Mayor Brown. 2020-109, uh, I would ask that be removed. I would like to vote on that separately. 2020-109. Oh, 109. All right. So those two are the separate considerations. Anything else? All right, uh, consent agenda items. Ordinance 2020-11, amending the Township Code of Delanco, or excuse me, Delanco, excuse me, start over again. Amending the Township Code at Chapter 1, governing general provisions to amend the list of payable offenses under the general penalty provision, first reading by title only, and set public hearing date for September 14th, 2020. Resolution 2020-106, resolution to credit property tax amount due to assessment error pursuant to NJSA 54 4-99 and 100. Resolution 2020-107, canceling outstanding checks for municipal court. Resolution 108, refund of tax overpayments. Resolution uh, dash 110, resolution authorizing professional services, Hickory and Chestnut Street drainage improvements, Hickory Street video and cleaning project, and Robbins Lane drainage project. Payment of bills, general $87,865.04 and $436,724.45, and parenthetically to county taxes. Payroll, 88,000 even, 43 cents. Capital, $455, zero cents. Escrow trust, $7,722.50. Housing trust, $7,380, no cents. Municipal open space, $7,117.73. Approval of minutes, uh, May 4th, 2020, May 18th, 2020. The approval of consent agenda, please, a motion. Brown will make that motion as read. Motion Holland, by Mr. Second. Brown. Second, please. Holland, second. Second by Ms. Holland. Roll call, please. Yes. 
Yes. Brown. Yes. 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 Christine. All right, uh, ordinance 2020-12. Uh, this was amending the concept code at chapter 216 governing park regulations with regard to waterfront regulations. Mr. Alec, you had uh, questions or comments? Yes. Uh, my concern is that uh, the public trust doctrine and uh, our responsibility as a community to uh, uphold or help that process. And my concern is really uh, in dealing with, yes, uh, we're, we're not restricting people from accessing the waterfront uh, for uh, walking along there. But my concern is that uh, with canoes and kayaks uh, of not allowing the public access to the water. Uh, if you go through the doctrine uh, that's laid out, uh, we have a responsibility to help people uh, or allow them to, to get to the waterfront. And what we're currently doing is uh, limiting access. Uh, at this, if we go through with this, we only have one access point uh, for the Rancocas, and that would be uh, Hawk Island Marina. Other than that, uh, there's no access along the Delaware or the Rancocas for the public uh, to get their uh, kayaks or uh, canoes, where currently they could use the end streets that we have uh, along the Delaware River. Uh, that are, are uh, public township uh, owned um, property. Uh, so that's where my concern is. And if we do this in restricting and we're looking at the uh, official property and making that a park uh, for this purpose, are we then putting a roadblock there again, uh, as I approve it, uh, changing the ordinance. Those are my concerns. Well, I think at the, at the, under the present conditions, uh, and this has been something longstanding and really following the guidance from the joint insurance fund is that the township does not have a suitable uh, landing dock access point that's safe for the public that would be insurable and covered by the joint insurance fund for the municipality. Uh, none of our uh, municipal parks have a, have a proper uh, access point. Uh, the, the dunes, even though we have significant waterfront up there, that there isn't safe access to that waterfront. Um, that's on that's on a, a long term list of projects uh, to make that into something that, that is more accessible. But uh, uh, the condition of the uh, uh, Union Avenue ramp is really driven what kind of drove this. The the street ends uh, along the Delaware are are really unsuitable for that purpose. Uh, uh, at low water, yeah, it's possible. At high water, that's really uh, a dangerous situation there with the boat lakes and, and so forth that uh, we deal with there. So uh, I think this can be seen as an interim measure that we can uh, make. We, we're assuring that we we can keep the public safe and not invite them into a dangerous situation. And I think that's really the purpose at this time with this amendment. Are there any other comments by committee? Uh, 
and I fully understand that. I mean, I've been kayaking for 35 years or so, and uh, it's you you want a you want a safe access point, and you want a if it's a public area, uh, you want to ensure that that you're using a public uh, uh, proper access point, that it's not on proper private property, you're not trespassing. And you're not putting yourself in a dangerous situation. And uh, as I said we had uh, the GIF, uh, Mr. Seville, come down several years ago and look at that uh, specifically Union Avenue and some other areas. Um, and it's just uh, it's not suitable as a as a uh, for the public for uses like that. So hopefully someday, uh, hopefully someday soon. If um, Mr. Fox is fortunate with his negotiations with DEP, we can see some movement on a project uh, at the Zerberg uh, waterfront there and include something like that. But until then, uh, we can't sanction uh, uh, public access to uh, as much as as much waterfront property as the township has. Uh, we really don't have anything suitable that's safe for the public. Does that answer your question? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I agree with Fern. Uh, living in a, a waterfront community like this, um, however, um, it could take a long time for either the uh, project at Ash Street and also the Zerbrook property. I think what we may be able to do is to put Union Avenue on one of our capital projects to see why we can't do something with a ramp there or even look for a grant because that would be an excellent opportunity to actually um, make that space available because the other two properties aren't going to move real fast. But that one uh, doesn't need the clearing or anything that um, I think we may have better luck uh, putting that on our capital list and getting maybe uh, an idea from Harry as to how we can improve Union Avenue. Because that, in, in my mind, has the access, the openings there, and it's a lot easier. So... That would be my suggestion, Fern, and I certainly appreciate how you feel because I feel that way myself. Thank you. So do you want to act on uh, this ordinance in the time being or table Hi. this? Brown, Brown, unmuted. Uh, Brown, I'm not ready to move on this. I think we need to look into this a little bit more. Um, you can't hear me. How about under my chin? I'm good. Thanks, Aaron. I love you, man. Okay. Uh, if, if you've ever been out in the river and you uh, have a bent prop or um, you're you're in an emergency situation, uh, or if you have health requirements and you need to beat your boat you're not going to get into reading every town ordinance. Uh, the river was here before us. And I really think uh, if you got to use our beach, you know, you should be able to um, in the event of an emergency, but uh, you know, cause we own all the uh, street ends and we just made nice bulkheads and. Muted. John. No, it looks like it disconnected. If you had discussions with uh, Mr. Heinhold regarding this, uh, because of some issues that we had with uh, uh, party boats and so forth, and jet skis refueling uh, at, uh, at Union Avenue. 
Go star nine, then back to star six. How about on your phone? Instead of the star six, is there a mute button that you could unmute? I hear somebody. Nope, you're not coming through. <laughs> You're talking to mine? I'll unmute you. It's not coming through. Do you want to the committee to move forward or table this, or, or do you want to act on it? I'd like to uh, be able to uh, review the doc document uh, for public trust doctrine and practical steps in hand public access uh, that was put out by the state. The piece in there about liability waivers uh, and uh, some legislative uh, language that was put in into the uh, into the document, and there's some other uh, items in there that I'd like to take the time to uh, review uh, more closely before making a decision to move forward. So I put this on uh, for September 14th. Is that enough time? I'm good with that. Mr. Brown? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Any other comments? I would like to be uh, talking about the permit. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
uh, I'll get copies of this made up or yeah. printed and get in everyone's box. I just got came across this information this morning. Uh, Kate Fitzpatrick, uh, I would like copies of those documents as well, Fern. Thank you. You want me to do it? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, uh over the next couple of days, we'll get copies made up and put in our mailboxes for everyone. Thank you. I'll get that original. Box. Thank you. All right. The other item, uh, Resolution 2020-109, authorizing execution of the letter of agreement settlement of Fred Kennedy Trucking versus Delanco et al. Docket uh, number Burlington uh, L1587-19 and A03639-192. I believe Mr. Brown had a question on that. Okay. So, given that, uh, may I have a motion for Resolution 2020-109, uh, title I just read, Execution of the Letter of Agreement and Settlement of the Fred Company, Fred Kennedy Trucking v. Delanco Township, as previously uh, spoken. Motion, please. Uh, second, please. All right. <laughs> what I heard, Kate. Motion was by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Kate Fitzpatrick moved. Yeah, so All right. Thank you. Roll call, please. All right. Am I coming in? Yes. Okay. Mr. Brown. He abstained. Abstained. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Holland. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Olet? Yes. Mr. Olet, yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. Mr. Templeton, yes. Thank you. Uh, one abstention and four in the affirmative. Thank you. All right. Uh, I believe that completes the open items on the consent agenda. Uh, resolution 2020-111, resolution of the Committee of the Township of Delanco County, Burlington, New Jersey, authorizing the appointment of police officer in attendance at the Mercer County Police Academy. Uh, Chief Desaino, do you have anything to add on this at this time? The, the committee did receive some background information from Mr. Schwab over the last couple of days on this. I think I'm unmuted. Anybody can hear me? Yeah, you're back. <laughs> back in. Uh, we went through a lengthy uh, background process, and we think this gentleman is the best candidate out of the ones that uh, we did the backgrounds and interviewed. Uh, I think he's a uh, very intelligent, uh, I would say, young man, only because he's 23 years to my younger. But um, I, I think it's a good selection. He, he's uh, a resident of Lanco, and uh, you know I think it's always a good thing to have people who are invested in the community, not only, uh, you know, employment wise, but also as, you know, as a resident. So, uh, you know, they're encouraging police departments to uh, recruit and select individuals from their own community. And uh, I think this accomplishes that plus we're getting a, uh, someone of a quality character and, um, and intelligence. Okay. And the officer's name is Christian Delfonso. Yes. Okay. Christian Delfonso. He's a recent resident of Delanco. He uh, he's established some roots here. He you know he was born and raised in Collegeville, PA, but uh, met a uh, person from uh, this area and uh, fell in love with the area when he met her, her family, and he decided to uh, purchase a house and um, they're you know looking forward to getting a wedding. And, uh, you know, like I said, someone's going to be around for a long time, not only with the police department, but with the community. Okay. Any questions from committee on this? 
Uh, motion, please. On resolution uh, dash one eleven. Holland, I'll move. Motion by Ms. Holland. Second, please. For an alert, second. Second by Mr. Alette. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Sure. Mr. Alette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thanks for the good work, Chief, and Mr. Schwab on the uh, interview process there. Uh, the meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions, session two. Okay. Any uh, call-ins mm -hmm. or visitors, please state your name and address. This is session two, public. Is anybody from the public? Okay. Any questions or comments for the Township Committee for the public, from the public? Hearing none, this uh, second session is closed. I'll close to the public correspondence, please. Yes, we have several pieces of correspondence. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Based on received an email correspondence uh, today from Matt Johnson of the Wellington County um, Department, uh, uh, Parks Department. They are um, moving forward with their construction con contract for the Rancocos Creek Greenway Regional Trail Development to link em Emico Island Park to Pennington Park. There's other approvals they have to get, but that is moving forward. Um, we received a email correspondence from Mary Pat Rowdy uh, of Burlington County on behalf of, uh, of the um, the three holders approved the second round of grants last night. The Lancaster Township received 130000 for the Event 1 project of Field of Dreams. Grant agreements will be mailed out next week. So that was that um, additional submission for the town that hadn't received it in, the, in a previous round. They gave an opportunity, and this is the award of $130,000. We already acknowledged the letters of interest from Ron Naylor and Alyssa De La Pena for membership on the HPAB. Um, we received a letter of resignation from the Recreation Commission, Joshua Reese, who has moved um, out of July to Hawaii. And that's the activity that I can see on the Recreation Commission. Um, we received a letter from the State Department of Transportation. They are announcing at, that they are going to be accepting applications for the 2020 Transportation Alternative Set-Aside Program. I don't believe Delanco has ever participated in this, this set-aside program. It's for non-traditional projects, such as on-road and off-road trail facilities for pedestrians, bicyclists, conservation, and use of abandoned railroads, um, construction of scenic turnouts, overlooks, and viewing areas. Um, I know our engineer isn't here this evening. I'm not real familiar with this particular set of five I don't think the joint has ever participated in this. But it does have a very quick turnaround, and that it is due November 24th. And everyone did get a copy of that in their mailbox. So I'll bring you back um, for the September 14th meeting when the engineer. Will be uh, here. I don't you know. Uh, and that committee is so that is something we do not want to participate in. Okay. Yes. Are you back on the 14th? Yes. Right. Very good. But, but I yes. want to acknowledge it as correspondence. Uh, one more piece of correspondence. We received a letter from Amber Perlmutter of the Delanco Environmental Advisory Board um, with a suggestion that the Township Committee consider the creation of a parks department for the Township of Delanco. And everyone did get a copy of that letter. So uh, that is the correspondence that I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, status of, uh, does anyone have any questions from Mrs. Laurel on any of those items? Status of uh, coronavirus uh, disease, COVID-19. 
uh, as the committee is well aware, I've been sending out uh, emails, again, a daily uh, tabulation of the county's uh, counts of uh, uh, COVID positives and so forth. Uh, also, some updates from the bi now bi weekly um, uh, county health and uh, governor staff uh, uh, updates. Uh, those meetings have gotten uh, not much n new information has come out of those. There's there's some explanatory uh, background on some of the uh, recent executive orders, and uh, usually the most information that comes out are specific questions that come from the various communities and municipalities on on very specific situations uh, that they have in their communities. Um, the big thing going forward into the, into the late summer and fall season is the maintained. Uh, the good practices, social distancing, the masking, uh, the R number, the, the uh, spread of the disease, the number is below one, which is good, uh, meaning that each person that uh, tests positive, they're not infecting more than one person, um, is my understanding of, of, of that uh, numerical value. Uh, but going forward, as we're looking at school reopening, it's going to be critical that... Uh, we continue this good downward trend in positives and uh, and so forth. Otherwise, with uh, if we do get into a uh, in person in in the building uh, school reopening and we get a flare up as we've been reading and hearing about in other states and other communities when they do open schools, we're going to be in an endless cycle of opening and closing. So it's be critically important that as a community. Um, up and down families, uh, our young people in the schools, uh, practice social distancing, wear the mask, protect yourselves, protect everyone. Uh, and uh, we'll be working towards having a successful school opening and be able to sustain that. Uh, the contact tracing has been uh, extremely difficult. People refuse to uh, uh, divulge where they've been or who they've been with. Um, and that really has not uh, uh, yielded any um, or much positive success, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, and the last thing uh, on my report on that, I uh, received an email late this afternoon. I forwarded it to the rest of the committee. There's a special school board meeting uh, uh, Wednesday night, seven. Uh, all the signed in information. It will be a virtual meeting uh, on Zoom and uh, the Delanco uh, school board website. Uh, Delanco.com, and that starts at 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, let's see, any comments or questions of me regarding any of that? Uh, next is report on municipal building reopening and meeting room plan update. I guess we're living that right now. Uh, Mrs. Lord, the uh, municipal building reopening and uh, and so forth, your comments and observations on how it's going. Uh, yes, can you hear me? I had to, I got I dropped off, so I had to call back in. Um, yeah. Again, again, we've had a uh, opening um, for three days a week: Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Um, that is continuing. Um, we. If, if this is the first time you've been here and you saw our lobby, you can see that it's all marked out, uh, stage, so people maintain six foot distancing. It's been successful. We have the addition of the large drop box right out at the front window, um, on the outside, right by the front door. Very successful with people dropping off. Also, the small one is still active. People fill that up. Um, so it is, um, you know, uh, we're moving along quite successfully. Uh, also, to uh, this room, after there is an, a meeting in here or a use of this meeting, um, one of our public works employees, particularly Ken Schedeker, we purchased a mister and will come in and miss the tables, the chairs, um, all, all the non-electronic surfaces, and then whoever was uh, the user of the room then comes up on the dais if they use the dais or those electronic and does the hand because you can't miss the electronics. And that's been working very well, too. Uh, I have nothing else to report. Okay. Thank you. Um, an awful lot of work has gone into making this happen. As, as awkward as this feels, but uh, a 
lot of the groundwork was laid by the uh, planning board, Mrs. Martin. So thank you uh, and everyone that's helped out on that. Discussion items. Uh, number one, continued discussion, defense regulations. Um, this was really uh, asked for this to be put on only in that uh, uh, for continued consideration. Uh, I've passed on some information and the proposed ordinance that Mr. Heinhold uh, drafted that I believe is in the packet. Uh, but I passed that information on to the chair and vice chair of the Joint Land Use Board for, to solicit, the, solicit their comments and input. Uh, but uh, really just to keep this alive. Uh, I know we had uh, a resident on the, um, uh, that's trying to replace a non-conforming fence and is kind of stuck with uh, a fence that doesn't comply with the current uh, fence requirements as far as height and location. And rather than go through the uh, ex expense, uh, time and and, uh, and money that that would take to get a variance is seeking some kind of relief. So um, Mr. Heinhold had drafted an administrative review uh, uh, process. And I just wanted to, to have everyone uh, Think and consider that, and uh, we'll take it up at the next meeting. Does anyone have anything to <laughs> mention about that right now, or uh, as we go forward? Item two: uh, fall town fall town wide yard sale update, uh, September twenty sixth. <laughs> uh, Before we move, are you moving? Are you continuing this proposed fence ordinance for the fourteenth? Yes. As a discussion item. Well, yeah, we'll continue there in May. <laughs> okay. We'll see. We'll see how things evolve. Okay. I put this whole town wide yard sale update um, on because I just wanted to report that the um, squad, our emergency squad and firehouse, they have actually uh, changed uh, their decision. They will not be holding their hoagie sale. Um, so there will not be that event. Uh, I'm not sure if the Boy Scouts are going to do their famous pork roll, egg and cheese sandwich. So I just wanted to report that uh, we will not have that big event at the firehouse. And whether or not we still want to go ahead with, um, we, we have uh, time. We have it out, you know, for people to register for the yard sale. But, um, you know, I just wanted to report that the, the fire company and the squad will not be participating. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? Any questions, comments on any of it? Anyone have a need for ex an executive session this evening? I don't know if Richard's still here. Richard, did you have an executive session need? No, no need. Richard shaking his head now. <laughs> no executive session needed. All right, thank you. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, you, you didn't hear the. How about if we just announce the adjournment? A motion made by Ms. Fitzpatrick, seconded by Mr. Brown, to adjourn the meeting. There will be no executive session. And all in favor were, I believe, five in the affirmative. Thank <laughs> you.